Hi kids! Good morning! Today's lesson is about matter. Matter is found in different forms. The foods you eat, the clothes you wear, the place where you live, the water that you drink. The air you breathe. The materials you see around you are made up of matter. Living organism, humans, plants, animals, as well as non-living things are example of matter. Matter exists in different forms, solid, liquid, gas. Like other materials, solid have different characteristics and properties, such as size, shape, color, odor, texture, and others. Solid materials could also undergo changes when exposed to certain conditions such as temperature or mixed with other materials. In the succeeding activities, you will do inquiry-based investigations to help you describe and understand changes that materials undergo when exposed to certain conditions, you will also do activities that will help you evaluate whether changes in materials are useful or harmful to the environment. The activities that you will do will help you develop the different science process skills, investigating, experimenting, observing, describing, organizing data, analyzing, interpreting, and explaining the result. For today's topic, we are going to talk about materials that absorb water. Why is it important to classify materials? In this topic, you will learn more about how to use properties of matter by grouping and classifying matters based on the ability to absorb water. One way of classifying matter is by observing if certain matter has the ability to absorb liquid, we call it absorbent and not absorbent. Absorbent materials are normally seen in objects with a lot of holes that allow liquid to get inside the materials and occupy the spaces in it through capillarity. What is capillarity? Capillarity is the ability of liquid to pass through narrow spaces without the assistance of an external force like gravity. There are material that seems to have no holes in them but are still able to absorb liquid because these materials have very tiny holes which are, all, which are almost microscopic. Microscopic means very small as to be visible only with a microscope and that allow liquid to come in. This property of material is called porosity. What is porosity? Porosity is the ability of material to absorb or hold liquid or moisture to a certain extent. Well, look at this figure.
what can you see in the picture? The picture shows the hand pressing the wet sponge. Then what happened to the sponge after pressing it? Water comes out of it. An object showing porosity. The easiest way to measure the object's ability to absorb liquid is by first measuring the weight of the dry material, and then measuring it again after it has been soaked in liquid, and then subtracting the weight of dry material with the soaked materials, or you can use this formula. Object after soaking in liquid minus object before soaking in liquid is equal to the amount of liquid absorbed. Let us try it. I have here a sponge, a glass, and a baker with 200 milliliter of water. Pour water in a glass. Now, suck the sponge in the glass of water. Then remove. And squeeze the sponge. Oh, water. What happened to the water after pressing it? The water come out. The object showing porosity. Now children, it's your turn. Get your pen and paper because you're going to measure the amount of liquid as absorbed by the sponge. Are you ready? Okay, let us recall how to measure the object's ability to absorb water. Object after soaking in liquid minus object before soaking in liquid is equal to the amount of liquid absorbed. Ready? Here, the 200 milliliter of water is put it in a glass. Then, I will put the sponge inside the glass. Then, I will remove the sponge and set it aside. Are you ready now? Let me transfer the water into the baker. As you can see, the water amounts to 100 milliliter. Okay. How much water were absorbed by the sponge? Amount of water inside the glass before soaking the sponge is 200 milliliter. Amount of water left in the glass after soaking the sponge is 100 milliliter. Amount of water absorbed is 100 milliliter. Who got the correct answer? Good job, kids! In the next activity, we will try to find out which of the different kinds of paper towel can absorb the most amount of liquid. You will also learn how to measure the amount of liquid that is being absorbed. Let us do this activity number two. Comparing absorption of paper towel, which brand of paper towel is the most absorbent? D. 
different brands of paper towel, baker, graduated cylinder, and water. What shall we do? First, measure 200 ml of water using the baker. Second, soak the first brand of paper towel in the baker with water. Third, remove the paper towel then observe. Fourth, measure the remaining liquid in the baker by pouring it in the graduated cylinder. Fifth, record your observation in the chart. Now for video number 3. Now let's start with the first brand of paper towel, the brand A. First, measure 200 ml of water using the baker and then pour it in a glass. Second, soak the first brand of paper towel in the glass with 200 ml water. Third, remove the paper towel, then put it aside. Fourth, measure the remaining liquid in the glass by pouring it in the graduated cylinder. Fifth, record your observation in your notebook. Okay? Okay, then repeat the procedure for the other brands of paper towel. Now, for the second brand of paper towel, the brand B, first measure 200 ml of water using the graduated cylinder and then pour it in a glass. Second, soak the second brand of paper towel in the glass with 200 ml of water. Third, remove the paper towel, then put it aside. Fourth, measure the remaining liquid in the glass by pouring it in the graduated cylinder. Fifth, record your observation in your notebook. Okay. Then repeat the procedure for the other brands of paper towel. Now, for the third brand of paper towel, the brand C, first measure 200 ml of water using the graduated cylinder and then pour it in a glass. Second, soak the third brand of paper towel in the glass with 200 ml water. Third, remove the paper towel then put it aside. Fourth, measure the remaining liquid in the glass by pouring it in the graduated cylinder.
benefit, record your observation in your notebook. Okay? Now, let's check your work. Brand name of paper towel. Number 1, Brand A. Amount of liquid inside the baker before soaking the paper towel is 200 ml. Amount of liquid left in the baker after soaking the paper towel is 170 ml. Amount of liquid absorbed, 30 ml. For brand B, number 2, amount of liquid inside the baker before soaking the paper towel is 200 ml. Amount of liquid left in the baker after soaking the paper towel is 185 ml. Amount of liquid absorbed, 15 ml. Third, brand name of paper towel is brand C. Amount of liquid inside the baker before soaking the paper towel is 200 ml. Amount of liquid left in the baker after soaking the paper towel is 180 ml. Amount of liquid absorbed, 20 ml. Now, what have you found out? Which brand of paper towel absorbed the most amount of liquid? Answer The first brand of paper towel, that's brand A. Next, which absorbed the least? Answer The second paper towel, that's brand B. Why it is important that we know which brand of paper towel can absorb the most amount of liquid? Because it can help consumer know which paper towel will absorb the most amount of liquid. That is why paper towel are so absorbent. Different brands of paper towel have different methods of manufacturing their paper towels. In this activity, we will learn to test the different brands of paper towel for their strengths and absorbency. For our third and last activity that will be very easy, what you need to do is just classify material based on the ability to absorb water. Absorb means to take in something such as liquid in a natural or gradual way. Porous means having small holes that allow air or liquid to pass through. Example of porous material is cotton. Cotton is very porous which make it a natural absorber of water. Now let's proceed to our last activity. Just put check mark if the material absorb water and exit the material does not absorb water. Then answer the following questions. Did all the material absorb water? Which material did not absorb water? Why did they not absorb water? Classify the materials based on the ability to absorb water. Name of object, rubber ball, t-shirt, paste towel, plastic spoon, and cotton balls. Now, let us check. Name of object, rubber ball, absorb or not absorb? Not absorb. T-shirt, absorb or not absorb? Absorb. Face towel, absorb or not absorb? Absorb. Plastic spoon, absorb or not absorb? Not absorb. Cotton balls, absorb or not absorb? Absorb. Did all the materials absorb water? No, not all the materials absorb water. Which material did not absorb water? Rubber ball and plastic spoon. Why did they not absorb water? Because they are made from rubber and plastic materials and these materials do not allow air and water to pass through. Remember children, there are different materials in our environment that can be classified according to their properties. They can be classified based on their ability to absorb water. Some materials can absorb water, 
more than others. Who among you got five correct answer? Very good children. For your activity at home, please go to the link below. Hope you learned something about our topic. Study your lesson and happy learning. God bless. Make a cup of coffee.